and welcome on our video lesson. And today we talk about the play behavior on animals. If you take a kitten, give a ball kitten, or throw a new toy on the floor for your puppy and watch what happens, kittens and puppies appear to play with this object. Of course, if you take two puppies and put them in the same room and uh, just again, it looks like they are playing this time with each other and this method of observation is one of the ways to study something. Also, this method refers to subjective research, but it is a method to, to know what happened with animals. Pathologists want to study play behavioral the same way they study every other behavioral using theory and experiment and from both proximate and ultimate perspectives. And progress is being made on these fronts, but much remains to be done. And the study of play has it one unique challenge associated with it, and if you know. Uh, very little information we have uh, in books about the play behavior in animals. Evidence from ethology suggests that while not all spices engage in play, it's uh, uh, common, particularly among young individuals. Of course, uh, very young animals play more than old ones. And while play is probably more common in large brain vertebrates, such as primates, uh, and then in other spices, it's not limited to this group, nor is play limited to vertebrates, as the octopus play too. <laughs> if you see this toy, and uh, it is the play, and uh, so play was uh, has been documented in many spices. It simply has not been examined extremely uh, until very recently. But here we see this: uh, even the sharks and rays play in some and uh, turtles and. Uh, we will uh, watch the video today uh, how turtles play ball and of course very smart birds play and uh, uh, of course placental animals play very much. And here we see the young animals gently rails with each other, toes, kicks and push objects they find in their environment. Uh, chase one another for no apparent reason, jump, climb up and down trees over and over and practice hunting prey uh, that aren't even present <laughs> and it's many 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 forms of play uh, uh, from 1975 nobody know what to do with this information and here with this display remains a debatable subject in the ecological literature and why uh, one possible explanation is that pet owners and zookeeper stories are usually anecdotal at the best and huge <laughs> uh, overstatement at worst the second trip Possible reason that play behavioral was and is readily understood uh, is that animal behaviorists tend to study behaviorals that appear to have function, and when it comes to play, function is sometimes very hard to determine. And hence, there is a tendency to shy away from work in this area. Uh, and the third uh, related reason for the uh, relative lack of uh, controlled studies of plays tied to theory. And in this situation, uh, with respect to the study of play, has uh, improved somewhat since 1975 years when the Edward Wilson holds that no behavioral concept has provided more ill defined uh, and controversial and even unfunctionable than play. And there is not a disabled literature in 
on many aspects of animal play which seeks to answer various proximate and uh, ultimate questions dealing with play behavioral and let's start to study this. Uh, when I start to prepare this lecture, I really found that there is very little information. I'm a veterinarian, but I am also a mom, and uh, uh, I I saw that my daughter played, and I start to look for information about playing children, children play, uh, or, or yes, yeah, there is a lot of uh, common, and you will find it uh, in animals. In the animal behavioral literature, the numerous definition of play, the most widely cited of this definition plays all motor activity performed uh, osnatally that appears to be purposeless in which motor patterns from other Context may often be used in modified forms and uh, altered uh, temporal sequencing. And here this is a, a look for information about the, the play in children. Uh, then, uh, of course, it uh, has more information. Uh, and uh, this just slide from the research uh, middle to pattern definite play as the six stages of play for children and here is uh, very interesting information you see this from the zero to three months is just the baby play but uh, we just don't know what is this movement uh, uh, legs and uh, fingers but it is a play i think I understood a lot firstly I thought that playful behavior for example uh, in cats manifests uh, itself uh, at about five weeks let's play but no this is no play behavior manifests itself earlier uh, when the kitten only exposes its body, plays with parts of its body, uh, we just don't play it, pay attention uh, to this, we just don't understand it. Here is a three weeks old kitten, they are playing more. This is more, but uh, when they start to play, maybe uh, it's um, maybe it's two weeks, maybe even one week, after give doors, so it is uh, very interesting. And uh, yes, I saw all the examples in this play with animals. Here was this is examples of children play, and even expressive, uh, like in music, uh, reading, something. Of course, for animals it's impossible, but <laughs> to <laughs> to draw something. Here was this is, uh, this elephant which can just write something. And, uh, digital play, uh, something to do with uh, some toys, even a bird, uh, uh, something with a cubic, and here is this, the same, constructive play. And yes, I saw it. And we can find analogies uh, of such behavior. And yes, this question need to be studied further. And now we will talk, uh, take a closer look at that I found in the literature about animals. What I found here was this is a first play, object play. Uh, object play involves the use of in it right, objects such, such as uh, sticks, uh, rocks, leaves, uh, fruit, for example, and human provided ob objects and the uh, pushing, uh, curing, or manipulating of such objects and animals underlie again uh, undertaking object uh, exploration, discover that an object is uh, while during object play the animal acts as it's uh, trying to determine what it can do with this object and for example <laughs> I will give you the link like this turtle play ball not only one it's very very common for turtles even for home animals and uh, I remember the tables where we saw which animal spices play behavioral so here is the example with the turtle 
A wonderful example of the object play has been documented in a chimpanzee population living in a mountains of Tanzania. Researcher, researcher examine videotapes of the clamps uh, chimps in the, this population found a uh, behavioral they uh, left uh, leaf pile pooling uh, as groups of chimps uh, move down the slope uh, of a mountain an individual will sometimes uh, stop and to walk backward uh, and pull in handfuls of leaves uh, along with him as he proceeds. And then the claim stops and takes the walks or some thoughts. So the pile of the leaves that they create and you know, the best stellar leaf jumps. It's, it's very, very common to play with leaves. Isn't uh, all uh, people like it, and even not children, even adults too? And here was this uh, the kind of object play in javelin. Young animals often have more free time, of course, and the, than adults to engage in object play. And from a functional uh, perspective, object play in young animals is often associated with some aspect of practice uh, when animals uh, learn, learn something that uh, will benefit it uh, the, of the short of long term for example and young predators uh, may use object play to practice hunting for example and he was uh, no, even not very young but of course the mom take this mouse and give the babies and start to play or kittens start to play with this mouse and um, in this book uh, I, I give you this uh, link uh, book for uh, uh, ravens playing in the snow in this book comment of the raven uh, bent hedge burnt hedge uh, describes how play Occupates more of the Raven's time than one might predict from the general survey of the uh, even behavioral literature. For example, young Raven's play with uh, virtually uh, every new kind of objects and they uh, use the leaves, uh, uh, bottle cups, uh, seashells, and glass. And uh, even in the blue berries and adult rabbits still manipulate uh, with objects after they mature. It's very interesting for birds with a big brain. Of course, these birds are very smart. Another kind of play is locomotor play. And here is this is uh, locomotor play. Uh, jumps, twists, uh, shakes, and here this is a similar physical action has been studied in rodents and primates and young animals in particular appear to human observers to enjoy the uh, play and several hypotheses have been advanced uh, to explain the function of locomotor play and both in animals and in, in humans too and play both provides experience uh, experts and train specific motor skills that will be needed uh, later in life. Uh, it also gives animals a better understanding of the lay of the land in which they have to serve and some scientists uh, see uh, 19 potential anatomical and physiological benefits of motor play and one of these uh, uh, was uh, uh, cerebral synapse distribution, uh, especially in cerebellum, and the brain provides critical coordination related to the limbs and smooth movement, posture changes, eye limb coordination, and uh, other movements in mammals. 
and during development more cerebral synapses are created than an animal used in later life. It's very important to we'll see this the table. And the number of these synapses appears to be a function of experience and the question when is the how well played behavioral cord correlates with formation of synapses, especially in juvenile in juvenile animals, in juvenile mice, the same will see this ex, uh, researchers. And here was this table and examine the potential benefits of locomotor play. And here was this is more, most is uh, temporary, not for all life, but some of them modification of muscle fiber type. Uh, differentiation and it's probably permanent and modification of cerebral synapse distribution. See, yes, absolutely permanent and uh, work elicit uh, 19 benefits that might be associated with uh, elevated motor activity. And here we see the only two permanent effects for motor play and locomotor play. And here was this displays for cerebral synaptogenesis or vice versa. The relationship between play and the growth of synapses in the brain is uh, certainly rape for uh, rape of exploration. And uh, what is more, another, another major development change, the differentiation of muscle fibers into fast or slow fibers also correlates seniorly with the development of motor play and uh, for a better understanding of this issue you can watch a video about the uh, physiology of uh, synapses and uh, motor fibers in the, on our channel in animal or uh, physiology of animal section. But the question is very interesting, of course, it is a very interesting question about this. The pet uh, incentive synaptogenesis or vice versa is just uh, for smart, very uh, smart animals uh, and brain cells, of course, have the thousands of synapses, contacts uh, and uh, what happened in the birds play brain would play with other has a digits brain brains and the same may go for humans uh, we have a lot of information for the past 50 years international animal cognition research uh, has often related the use to tools such as ropes and sticks to cognitive abilities in animals. We will talk about uh, cognitive abilities in the end of the spectacle, but research on Australian native birds published in a uh, scientific report uh, cost dubbed and long held uh, assumption about the links between large brains and tool use. The study found no significant association between tool use and brain mass, however, very clear uh, differences in the relative brain mass uh, when birds slow showing play behavioral uh, compared to those that didn't play in particular kinds that played with other known as social play. Social play is the more um, complete play, it's very uh, high level of the play, it's the largest brain mass relative to body size and even the longest life spans, uh, long, the longest life. And results such as play behavior may be an important drive in the evolution of large brains in a number of species, including humans. And here this is a tool uh, which the birds use. It's, it can be very different. Uh, and here this is even very smart, uh, uh, very smart birds, so that it's bird play, uh, play behavioral usually occurring in uh, some uh, juvenile birds. 
and here we see the display behavior is usually subdivided in, uh, into three categories solo play like in, in this link uh, we see the foreign cockat uh, cockatoos uh, beat drum like <laughs> even a star uh, but it is a solo play and object play will be discussed about solo play and object play and uh, social play uh, here we see the so uh, solo plays is may involve a single bird running skipping and jumping and rolling uh, handing in dancing even and do something but a long solo play is the most widespread form of play and as you see in mammals it is the first form of the play solo play in very very young uh, juveniles and common and among honey eats uh, eaters and even the parts like we see and some pigeon spices mm. but Object play. Uh, this involves object uh, and um, of any kind, including sticks, stones, and small household items. And object players uh, might carry a stick or a stone, or even just a leaf around, drop it, and uh, then pick it up again and run with it. And uh, in birds, it's very funny to find this. Um, combine and uh, like uh, object play and a uh, more high level of the play it is a social play involves two or more individuals in social play is so far the rarest category it might involve one bird holding an object it's uh, brick and the others uh, chasing it and uh, published cases are largely limited to parts and uh, and are now in uh, uh, May Peaks and Ravens and right uh, uh, wind that uh, uh, different birds are now to play a game uh, in which two young girls uh, stimulate usually grab a small stick or a bunch of grass when each tree is for uh, rest it from the other. It's important to note that social players are also solo and object players, but solo or object players may not be social players. Uh, the latter, latter is uh, considered a more complex form of play, not for uh, all brains, like it's, uh, you can say. Social play, our last category, is perhaps the best studied type. And three possible function players serve the most attention: honing, uh, psychological, uh, psychological skills, uh, forging, long-lasting social bonds, and fostering cognitive skills. And scientists studying primates and uh, carnivores have uh, speculated in part particular about the cognitive benefits of social play. The social play in the image chimpanzees provide young males with the cognitive skills for coalition from important in adult life. Another possible cognitive benefit of social play has to do with self assessment. In fact, uh, and antelopes prefer same age play partners, uh, and while this uh, preference could have many cases. There is evidence suggesting that the infants choose play partners that provide them with a reasonable comparison from which to display their own development. So it's links um, for chimpanzee. It's not just a play for primates and forming social relatives uh, and connection and uh, <coughs> Our consider playing fighting in animals, for which three possible cognitive benefits have been such as play fighting exacts furial cost and may be ideal for learning behavioral flexibility and since real fighting is adult life is potentially dangerous of course and play fighting may also train male and um, like monkeys to 
gauge the entrench, uh, inter, uh, nation of other. In addition, they must work their way up dominance hierarchy, losing as well as uh, winning may encounter, so they develop and uh, and parents in both subordinate and dominant roles, roles that they will experience uh, elsewhere in life, and being uh, wrestling, jumping, rolling, um, round and tumble playing part of the ch child's life, and ch children's uh, play might function as general. Uh, physical training as with the locomotion play or prepare them for serious adult activities like fighting and hunting and both critical in evolution of course for all animals and perhaps route and taboo play tumble play uh, enables young children to their own strays and potential power or promotes Coalition building skills in group again an important factor of, uh, of uh, evolution, history evolution of animals. And here we see this slide. We notice that social play is a common, complex type of play. Um, and uh, besides, the animal is not immediately ready for this type of play. He is kitten five weeks old. For an example, you can play with him. And that's why I thought uh, it was at this age that it sh shows uh, such playful behavior. Just before that, it uh, was just a solo play. And just I don't understand what, <laughs> what uh, it do just uh, looking on the... Uh, tail uh, loops around, but it is a play, but solo play. And here was a social play and cognition. Uh, one cognitive related benefits of social play revolves around the idea of self assessment, and here animals use social plays as a means to uh, monitor the developmental process and progress as compared with other. Other babies of, for example, this cat, for example, in infant individuals prefer some age player, of course, for just in the works of Thompson has uh, hypothesized that it's uh, primarily a function of young individuals attempting to choose play partners that provide them with a reasonable comparison uh, from which to with their own development, of course. And for humans, the same. My daughter prefers to play with the children the same age. With respect to cognition and social play, one question that ecologists have addressed is uh, how do animals, especially young animals, know that they are engaged in play and how do they communicate uh, his information to each other uh, and since many of the behavioral patterns seen during play are also common in other con contexts hunting mating dangerous aggressive uh, interaction and how do animals know they are playing and not involved in the real activity I think I think that uh, young animals think that everywhere the play is everywhere, but the life is play, and they are very interesting question because we also often ask uh, this question, and we are interested in the whether the animals animal is playing or is it aggressive, because it's very very the same, the same, and. Uh, um, scientist Mark Bekov has pro proceed three possible solutions to this important uh, but often overlooked question and one way that animals may uh, uh, distinguish play from related activities is that uh, the order and frequency of behavioral components of play is often quite different from that of their real activity. 
and uh, when play behavioral is compared with the adult functional behavioral that is resembles behavioral pattern uh, patterns during play are often extra uh, like uh, uh, misplaced it and here this is links from behavioral in animals but it is a very important question for vet doctors. How do we know it is a game or a grace? And uh, for animal keepers too. But do you think this is, a, is this is a play? But sometimes it's just aggressive. It's the same phase, the same position. And it is a very big question. <laughs> Why do dogs play bite? And uh, often their owners and here was this dog, it is a killer, and it is really a big problem to understand. If my dog is playing with me, or it, she, <laughs> it's showing aggression in reality. And for kitten too, for cats the same. How understand, how to stop this play? And dogs of all sizes uh, will moth. With each other, it's normal, so they know how to control their, their bite. And some breeds are more aggressive and stronger, of course, than others. If you think of a, a mature, just a little York play biting your hands, and the, for example, some Bernard play biting your hands, you will probably have a very different reaction. And purples, because of their size, will also know uh, not play bite as hard. But as they grow up, they start be straight, will naturally increase, and um, uh, the killer in its age played biting. Uh, it's going to because uh, it's having fun for you, and it uh, thinks you are one of the guys. And this is how you should play. It's great to be a part of the gang, but it's important to know the difference between play biting and aggression. Uh, if your dog is play biting, it's a sign, a sign uh, of affection. It's gentle. He looks happy and he uh, might even be lying down and aggressive dog where will grow back or snark or snarl and his body will be tense and he will show his teeth but the same it can be in a play and aggressive bites are often faster of course than in play bite and the big difference is uh, you will feel it and knowing the difference between aggression and playing is key to standing safe and keeping your hand especially for for prepare owners but not everyone wants to risk their favorite parent dance and they may want to stop playing but of course and if you want to know more how to stop your dog from biting it's this link for you uh, but uh, inhibit the bite but first I, I say that uh, we should stop this if you think that it only appears in dogs uh, uh, or only in young animals and you are mistaken, often, often very difficult to figure out but my cat, for example, often bite me when I played with him. Uh, that is the reason for this problem. Yes, the reason we found the dog bites is because they think it's normal for dogs. Dogs are covered in hair, food, so gentle bites are not harmful. Uh, everything is wrong with the man, with the humans. We are lazy without any food, and our dog may not have noticed. Just after all, it's your problem, not it's and uh, it's really the first step for how to get your puppy to stop biting it's uh, is to inhibit the behavior this kind of behavior uh, in a young uh, uh, age it's totally normal for puppies to mouse each other but not for humans and the goal here is to teach the puppy that gentle play continues and uh, root play just stop 
and uh, I, I think all will be okay. It's just talk to each other and your dog will understand you. But uh, we can use the just toys. Don't use the hands. Uh, if you would like to teach your puppy that her mouth of human skin is not acceptable at all, you will most likely want to use uh, just another method for this method on how to make a puppy stop biting each time and puppy rise to mouth you put pull your hand away before contact and promptly uh, promptly provide a treat or a way around a turfy toy just use a toy uh, for him to bite on the street and uh, how to use the toy you can to find on this link but the toy it can be the same, but here another problem arises. How to pick up this eaten? How to pick up this toy? My dog bites when I take something away. Here we can find the information about this. And sometimes it's very difficult to uh, take away this toy. And enclosing the behavior. Here this is. Uh, just some owners encourage playing biting while others detest uh, it. Play biting is natural for your young dog, for your dog, so it's good when he practice it. It strengthens your relationship because he sees you as a friend, not a treat. And however, if you are and comfortable with it, you should find ways and we we'll discuss what way we can stop this. And you might want to reduce or stop the behavior of very, very social. And you want your dog to interact with lots of people and, of course, with lots of other dogs and killer. Do you remember this little? Uh, could scare one of your friends. If he play bites, then and your friends would be uh, deterred from visiting you again, or you <laughs> would have to create or get killer when people come over. It's when it, funny. Uh, I very often hear that people say, "Oh, don't worry, and uh, don't be afraid. He doesn't bite you. This is just game." But very often the dog can just bite and it's it's problem of owner of course it's not uh, first we degrees but we are already finishing with it and uh, what we can to say is this basic training and socialization we have a good understanding in relationship and of course it is a social with uh, other dogs and basic training uh, for you. Of course, the trainer said that they train, trained uh, not dog as they trained the owner. The second sound thought relate means by which animals may be able to distinguish play from uh, other activities is by the placement of play markets and we also uh, know as play signals and can serve to initiate play to indicate the desi desire uh, to continue playing and to warm adults that uh, the young are playing and not in danger in, of injury uh, in candles for example biting and uh, scaring are usually performed during dangerous activities such as fighting and predating and yet biting and scare, scaring are also play behaviors of young candles and that we found that play markers such as a ball uh, would precede biting, biting, biting and repeat side to side shaking of the head to indicate that they were not dangerous behaviors. And the ball, it 
it's uh, as a one position if you if you want to know more i will give you a link to this uh, like a doh english translation chart uh, but we will look on uh, we look on some of them on this slide in addition you should learn more game markers from animals and let's look at the photo from this side one of the markers uh, markets markets is the stable posture uh, notice the black dog its position very stable here we see this uh, the stable posture and the ball is the stable posture from which the animal can move easily in many direction allows the individual to stretch its muscles a place the head to the bower below another animal in a non threatening position and it's why there are problems with the signal problem. Uh, to understand what is this <laughs> chase me during the play bowling can be an uh, invitation to run if the bowling dog runs away the invitation uh, is to just be with me, uh, run to me, or for this run position, or oh, it's just mine. Mine seems this is that uh, we call possession ball, and it is displayed by the dog competing for the position of a resource, for example, for this ball. And here we see the same move away position, but the same stop. Uh, position or aggression and adult male reaction uh, react with the ball the same starting and going uh, starting and going and going also appears among agonistic behavior uh, and uh, in a way uh, and aggression behavior the same but the same position it's uh, the problem to understand what happened and another way Another play marker might, might be a particular kind of vocalization. Uh, of course, you know, the, for dog vocalization, it is just uh, uh, they call the barking. Uh, but for other animals, like a rat painting in a wolf or chimpanzee before or uh, during, uh, during a play interaction, it can be uh, many voices, many voc uh, vocalization. And playful body collie, uh, mixed breed dog standing in a play position, in a play posture, and bow, bow, and barking. Uh, and here is the code dog barking sounds. It can be alarm, and uh, it can be um, anxious barking, and of course, playful barking. Is the posture the same? You see the same stable posture. One more marker, but marker, but for more smart animals. Another play market have been found in primates, such as uh, gorillas and juvenile uh, lowland gorillas play with each other often, and play range. Uh, from gentle play to rude play, and when juvenile gorillas, particular males, uh, particular males were involved uh, in uh, this rude play, uh, the play was often perceived by the facial uh, mimicry and play face. We call this play face. This facial um, mimicry, which is not seen in other context includes slightly low, lowered eyebrows and an open mouth and in addition to using this facial uh, mimicry during uh, root play juvenile gorillas also displayed and when a play session was in a place that made uh, escape living difficult in other contexts in which it may be important to signal to others that that what is about to occur is play. Yes, and facial play not only for this, and oh, very often we uh, see the perfect mirroring uh, effect, like the same mimicry, or, uh, and here we see the same mimicry, like a mirror. 
and not only for harriers, for many, many other animals. Another way in which young animals may be able to understand play from related behaviors is by role reversal or self hand keeping on the part of any older playmates they may have and in role reversal and self reversal and self hand keeping uh, uh, keeping all the individuals as they low subordinate young animals to act as if they are dominant during play. Or the older animals perform some act, for example, aggressive act at the level clearly below that of which they are capable. And here this is uh, like a posture uh, on the um, down. Okay, this is this down posture, you dominate, I, I agree with it. And uh, when I start to um, find this information, I just find a very interesting article about play is serious business for elephants and the scientific American journal just visited, it's very interesting. And I have finished uh, soon the markers of the play and the final I want to offer you an interesting article just we will move uh, a general theory for the function of the play in general what is the function of the play of course there are many theories especially for humans I will leave to links uh, the first one is the site of the game museum where I found the collection of the American Journal of the Play and the second one is the article on play theories uh, and of course here, here we can find the first theories in the end of the 19th century like in the context some of classical theories claimed that play is the expression of the uh, uh, like impulse of uh, energy, practicing instincts, and parent and relaxation form, uh, like it, it just uh, civilization. It's uh, more and more, but the article is big, but just I don't take this all. But uh, we are interested in animals, and Mark Spinker from the Czech University of Living Science, his colleagues have hypothesized that the main function of the play is to allow animals to develop the uh, physical and uh, psychological skills to handle unexpected events in which they experience a loss of control and uh, specifically they propose that play functions to increase the versatility of movements uh, used to recover from sudden shocks uh, such as loss of balance and falling over and to enhance the ability of animals to cope emotionally with uh, unexpected stressful situations so it's just to be ready to many of them and here we can find this all this article the big article to men, uh, mammalian play, and here we see this one the used to strange poses in the game is typical not only for mammals but also for birds. And the smarter the bird, uh, the more unusual the posture, and it's many birds are more social playing food and sociality plates high levels of play. Do you remember it? And here we see this it's short we propose it plays as out of increased uh, versatility of movements used to recover from sudden gravitation, kinematic or just the position uh, in spice. It's very interesting for this uh, part. The second creating the unexpected in play and even creating this well controlled uh, 
various locomotive, locomotive movements similar to those used to serious behavior that load heavily, uh, heavily uh, on fitness traits such traits such as escape from predators, uh, uh, interspecific organism or hunting fast or dangerous prey and more and more just unexpected play. And here with this is one the relationship between uh, exploration and playing. And um, here with this is a kind of play for smart play for kitten. Uh, exploration can be viewed as a serious uh, part of play and during an initial uh, encounter with a novel environmental um, feature and animals first investigate it through serious exploration, examining whether it's dangerous or not, uh, it has any resource value to them. And the second there is not deliberate um, self-hand keeping in exploration and the third various plays associated with the relatively relaxed and a secure state, of course, exploration is more closely associated with fire perceived danger. In cases, of course, at first it's exploration and then a play, and it's very, very good to use smart function of the brain of smart animals. And even uh, have this book for play and exploration in children and animals the same. And here this is uh, one more rich cognitive controlled uh, content of play. Exactly, it's the slight cognitive abilities of all animals. For different kind of animals, the cognitive abilities is different. And during play, rapid alternation between uh, controlled and uncontrolled action requires uh, frequent and repeat assessment and uh, 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 resistment of reality different situations that do not normally follow each other. And it's imply, uh, as it implies that play is even when a solitary locomotion activity, a cognitively demanding activity too. And here this is uh, mobile where uh, the ability to experience the complex feeling of having fun many require rich developed cognitive system since our functional hypothesis about play is training for the uh, unexpected implies that so such training might be and when the chess for many animals play involved only in those with the uh, Increased cognitive capacity and also the level of the cognitive function need to play uh, may set a lower limit of the stage of ontogenetic development in which play first the pairs and here this is very smart animals mammal animals uh, which play with each other and you see this uh, very friendship relation ship with uh, these animals and now we have seen the very importance of the game uh, sometimes it's very difficult to determine the condition of uh, uh, of the sick animals and we'll talk about it in the next slide and having found the underlying uh, emotion in play uh, it is the one uh, way which we have in our farm with animals um, and every veterinarian and animal owner has experienced this sometimes a change in condition from a mind illness to critical illness can occur in a few hours more as the owner himself may simply not determine this because he is not an expert, not a vet. I suggest using the hame for evaluation. We have seen that most pet spices play, uh, play um, 
through their lives, even where all dogs and cats retain playing behavior uh, and use the play, use the object for play. But I also saw sick animals, who, even young animals, who did not want to play at all. It's just I, I prefer having fun with me, but if your dog don't want to play sick, if you your animal eats and drink, even eats and drink does for a walk but does not show normal play behavior, this is the signal and very uh, very soon it can be a problem for your dog, for you, for you like an owner and then here was a um, spider to play movements and the pleasure bell aspect in the fact that animals actively seek out and work for opportunities to play in the election and, and play only when they are relatively safe or unstressed or just without any pain. Uh, if the dog feels the pain, just uh, are stressed or, or just don't can't relax uh, any plague can be and have some uh, links just to how understand that's not normal something wrong and some symptoms indicate that your dog is uh, nearing the end of his life or just uh, have some disease uh, problems with the health uh, and the plan, uh, it's a marker. And one more, plain brain. Uh, we talked about the uh, synapses in the brain, but here we see this one uh, specific molecule uh, which produce in this synapses. Uh, it's about, about a little bit about neurochemistry. It's a dopamine molecule. Uh, it's inhibitory uh, transmitter uh, in synapses and it's very important transmitter like in uh, uh, norepinephrine, like in serotonin and uh, dopamine uh, take place in our mood. Of course, the play always it's good mood uh, and it's produced from the one amino acid tyrosine and the brain and here with this is Stefan Sivir. Uh, 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 the sentence uh, which studies this problem in a playful behavior, play behavior, increased gravity also may be in benefit of plays, play. Uh, so it's uh, just a link for dopamine in dog training and how it is important in the game uh, within uh, the game in the dogs. And it is all for today, but I will leave a lot of links. And of course, if you want to know more, I found this book. Not all books have the chapter about the play, but uh, uh, this book have and have the principles of animal behavior and chapter 16 play. It's just, uh, if you want, you just read the, uh, this part of the book. And see you again. Bye bye.